Hi guys, my name is Patrick Fahey, and my proposed topic of research for next year is biosensors. Every year, nearly 5 million people have died of complications and infections after drinking contaminated water. In addition to this, nearly 48 million cases of food poisoning are reported in the United States alone every year, with over 128,000 hospitalizations and over 3,000 deaths. Finally, nearly 13,000 Americans die each year due to both malignant and benign tumors. Brain tumors are currently the second leading cause of death in young adults and children. Biosensors are living organisms that can be used in many different fields, such as microbiology, environmental sciences, and medicine. The purpose of these biosensors greatly varies from field to field. However, they are most prominently used to test for conditions such as pollution and contaminants. Most recently, the use of bacteria and fungi has been a hot topic for detecting water and soil pollution, as well as for determining decay and breakdown of organic substances. Both Vibrio fischeri and Vibrio harvii have been used in studies to determine decay-induced nitrate concentrations in water. These bacterial strains have been extremely useful and appropriate for these studies because of their bioluminescence, which can be measured and used to determine the concentration of the pollutants in the water. Both Pinellas dipticus as well as strains of Ophmolotus and Armorellalia have been used in studies mainly as biosensors for soil pollution. Like the bacterial strains discussed above, these fungi also exhibit bioluminescence that can be measured and used as an appropriate tool for determining concentration of pollutants. In addition to just simply identifying a pollutant or a contaminant in an external environment, some new studies are experimenting with different bacteria's ability to identify and trace malignant tumors. By studying and identifying these more effective ways to use the biosensors in a medical and environmental world, it could be possible to identify and stop consumption of contaminated water supplies and spoiled food. In addition to this use of biosensors, the treatment of certain cancers and tumors would also be a breakthrough use of biosensors. Studies conducted by Tikhon and Vandermeer the roles of the LUC CDAB proteins as well as the HNOX proteins were observed in the chemical reactions that causes bioluminescence in Vibrio fischeri. One conclusion drawn from the study was that the LUC CDAB proteins act as reporters for the receptor cells within the Vibrio fischeri, thus essentially making them activators for the bioluminescence reaction. Another conclusion drawn from the study was that the heme nitrate oxygen binding protein, also referred to as HNOX, is used in the sensing of nitrates in the environment, thus triggering the bioluminescent genes as well. The HNOX binding protein really does play a large of a role in the bioluminescent reaction within Vibrio fischeri. This would make Vibrio fischeri a very good biosensor for nitrate concentrations, as well as decay sensing in food. Studies conducted by Wheats and Ballard, a North American strain of Pinellas stipticus was used as a biosensor to see the correlation of soil pollution and pH on the growth and bioluminescence of the fungi. The highest rates of bioluminescence and growth in the Pinellas stipticus were observed at a neutral pH and low pollution levels, thus suggesting an indirect correlation between the bioluminescence produced by the fungi and the pollution levels in the soil. Although there is an indirect correlation between the bioluminescence of the fungi and the pollution levels in the soil, this can still be an effective biosensor because the high pollution levels would simply just be displayed by little or no light reaction, which actually is quite on the contrary to the bacterial bioluminescence in Vibrio fischeri. Most recently, biosensors have been also experimented with as bioseekers and biotreaters. Over the past few years, there has been a renewed interest in the treatment of cancer with live microorganisms, based on the observation that some microorganisms display selective replication or preferential accumulation in the tumor microenvironment. Preferential replication offers a great potential to amplify the therapeutic effect of the microorganisms while sparing the normal tissues from toxicity. Much of the current research is intended to achieve selective replication within the tumor cells and act as a virus within the tumor cells as well. Many motile bacterial strains can facilitate throughout and within the tumor and can be especially effective in the treatment of the tumor. Because of their large genome size, bacterial strains can readily 
express multiple therapeutic transgenes such as cytokines and prodrug converting enzymes. These cytokines and prodrug converting enzymes can also be transferred, spread, and converted throughout the cell by ways of specialized antibiotics. In conclusion of the study, it was determined that the use of Salmonella typhernemurnium and other bacterial strains can be useful in the treatment of tumors. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. Do you have any questions?